bless you this morning. You're welcome in Jesus' name. This is the second Sunday in the month of December, the very last month of the year. Can we put our hands together for the Lord who has kept you and brought you to the end of the year? Who has kept you alive and seen you through all the days of this year? We give God praise and we worship his holiness. I want to use this opportunity to appreciate our pastor who has given me the opportunity to stand before you this morning and say i do appreciate this and uh, as we uh, listen to god's word this morning may you be blessed in the name of jesus may god speak to you this morning in the name of jesus our theme for the month of december is fulfillment fulfillment the lord will fulfill all your desires all his promise concerning you in the name of jesus there is none thing that the Lord has spoken concerning you this year that will be left unfulfilled in the name of Jesus. And the topic of our message this morning is the end matters. The end matters. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8 is where we will take our text this morning. Our text is from Ecclesiastes 7 verse 8. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 8. I read, The end of a thing is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words in the name of Jesus. The end of a matter is always better than the beginning. The word of God says. You know, some people may have said this year that when they started, it was a struggle. I tell you, as the year comes to an end, it will be better than when you started in the name of Jesus. I don't know where you are. I don't know where the position of things are with you. Maybe in your business, in your career, in your family, in your relationship, in whatever it is. It is, will end better for you in the name of Jesus. The end is better than the beginning of a thing. Our minds can wrongly put limits of what God can do through us. Maybe when the year started, it looked as if, oh, it was impossible to achieve some of the things, the goals that you've had this year. But God is not restricted by our limitations in the name of Jesus. Or the circumstances of our lives. Look beyond your situation to the amazing things God can do with you submitting to him. Praise the Lord. It is very, very important that we understand that it is the extent that you submit to God that he will take you in a year. He will take you in everything that you lay your hands to do. Some people will say to me, oh, pastor, why is it that, oh, the year is not ending well for me? Oh, why is it that when I started my business, oh, it's not working out still well? I tell you, there are things that you must still do. There is still a part that you need to play, even in the word of God that promises you that the end will be better than the beginning. It is not just you waking up and all moving and getting things done without you holding back on God that these things will come to pass. We have to be reliant on God. We have to rely on him. With a firm reliance on God, you can come into victory from even the seemingly smallest and humblest beginnings. In Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10, the Bible makes us know, do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Praise the Lord. Do not despise the small beginnings that you have. Maybe this year it started small. Maybe in your business it started small. But I assure you that God himself, who's has spoken to you will bring to pass greater things which he has said concerning your business concerning your life concerning your family concerning all that concerns you in the name of jesus in job chapter 8 verse 7 the bible says though your beginning was small yet your later end will increase abundantly in the name of jesus that is the word of god and some people will say to me, but pastor, why is my end? Why is my business? Why is my career? Why is my family not increasing? There is a responsibility of things that we must do, even on ourselves, from our own end. You may ask me those questions, but I assure you, God himself is working out something concerning you in the name of Jesus and your family. How do we make most of the times when it looks as if, oh, the things that I th 
thought would increase is not increasing. I started small. But Lord, why is it not increasing? Why am I not seeing it? It doesn't matter if you are a pastor. It doesn't matter if of your career or starting a business or going through school or maybe in a relationship. We all want the next step to go faster. Agree. We want to make increase. We want things to move along quickly and having to take small steps at a time can feel like as if you're, you're not moving at all. As it looks as if maybe some of the things that you have put your hands to do maybe in school or your career or your business, it looks as if there's no increase. Maybe there is no movement or there is, things are slow. How do we make most of those times when things don't seem to move as fast as it would have seemed to be? We're going to use Elijah as a case study this morning, and I'm going to read a particular story concerning Elijah and what really happened in that situation and what God expects of us when we begin a thing and what he expects us to do. I will read from 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 41 to 45, and we're talking about Elijah now. This was one after Elijah had slaughtered the, the, the prophets of Baal when they could not call down fire and his fire came down and leaked up water and then they were slaughtered. After that, in verse 41 of 1 Kings chapter 18, the Bible says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundant rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink and Elijah went up to the top of the camel then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant go up now look towards the sea so he went up and looked and said there is nothing the seven and, and, and seven times he said go again seven times then he came to pass at the seventh time that he said there is a cloud a small a small sorry as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea so he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot, go down before the rain stops. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black and the clouds and the wind and there was a heavy rain in the name of Jesus. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Four things, four things we must do if we expect our small beginning to increase. Even when it looks as if it became small, for, for your bet, for your end to be better, four things we must do. And I will take them quickly and we'll be ready to pray this morning. Do not despise small beginnings. Do all to hear from God. That's number one. Do not despise small beginnings, but what you need to do is that you need to hear from God. Elijah heard from God that there was going to be rain. Hello? And he took a step. He took a step of what God has asked him to do. He said, go and show yourself to the king. Elijah did as the Lord has commanded. In 1 Kings chapter 18, if we read verse 1 of that passage, the Bible says, and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, came to Elijah in the third year saying, go present yourself to Ahab and I will send you rain on the earth. Abraham, Elijah was given an instruction and he obeyed God. He took that step of going to show himself to the king of what God has spoken that there was going to be rain. He took a step. Maybe when this year started, God spoke to you about certain things. Did you obey God? Did you take the step to obey him even as he had spoken? If your ending of this year must be good, or must be better than when you started, then you need to have obeyed God at the beginning. Praise the Lord. Some people will say, oh, but pastor, uh, the year is, yeah, we may have missed it out here and there. Maybe of God has spoken to you, but you know what? The year has not ended yet in the name of Jesus. Are there things that God has spoken to you that you have not done yet? We can start today to make a change, to turn around, to obey him, to to remember his words of what he has spoken to us. And by the way, even if the year ends and maybe things didn't turn out as you have expected or for it to increase, January is coming. When the year now starts, that is the beginning again of another year. Will you listen to God, listen to him, and get ready to obey him even towards the end of 2024? But like I said, the year has not yet entered, ended. 
There's three more weeks before this year. Today is the 10th of, of December. We still have 21 more days before the year ends. And things can still change for you in the name of Jesus. The end matters. The end matters. What happens at the end of this year matters concerning you. Elijah had a promise from God that he would send rain upon the land. So Elijah goes to Ahab, the king of Israel, and says in 1 Kings chapter 41, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go and eat and drink. There's going to be sound of rain. Elijah took a step based on what God has spoken to him. Are you taking steps based on what God has spoken to you? Have you been obedient? Now at the time, there wasn't a cloud in the sky, but Elijah had faith in God. He trusted the word of God. He held on to the word of God. He did not discard the word of God. I don't know what God has spoken to you. Have you taken a step to obey him? 11 years ago, we filed our taxes, and it came to about $10,000 of tax returns. And God spoke to me and said, Namdi, don't touch a dime. Don't touch a dime of this money. Invest it in a small business. <laughs> and I obeyed God. I called my wife and I said, look, I know when people get tax returns, they think of what? They think of cars. Give me the, the, the things they think of. They think of all kinds of things. Oh, furniture. They, they, they invested in things that will not do any returns. Oh, because, I mean, a new car is good, correct? But God told me, do not spend a dime of this money. It was $10,000. We invested it in a business, and today, it is about 11 years later, that same business is yielding $10,000 monthly. <laughs> Brethren, when God speaks to you at the beginning of a thing, Obey him in the name of Jesus. Because God is leading you somewhere. If I had not obeyed God 11 years ago, it wouldn't have turned out this way. That money would have been spent on one frivolous thing and then, I mean, there's no returns to it. When God speaks to you at the beginning of a thing, obey him. Listen to him. Elijah obeyed God and took the steps that he needed to take. Do not despise, number two, of our time do not despise small beginnings do some praying praise the lord do some praying in verse 42 of our of the of the uh, account that we read of elijah the bible says he goes up to the mount of camel and what did he start doing elijah what did elijah start doing then he bowed his his head on the ground and put his face between his knees and he started what he started praying. Oh, I thought oh, God has spoken. If God has spoken, then he must come to pass. What is Elijah praying for? Brethren, even when God has spoken, God wants you to pray concerning that which he has spoken about you. For it to come to pass. For the end to be better than the beginning when you started, you need to still pray about it. Call upon the Lord. Commit those things into the hands of the Lord. Because we need to pray. We need to commit it into his hands. Number three, do not despise small beginnings. Do some cloud watching instead. Praise the Lord. Be expectant. Be expectant. Have faith in God. Hello. <laughs> you know, after Elijah started praying, do you know what he asked his servant to go do? He should go and check whether the clouds were there. He got down on the ground, put his face between his knees, and he prayed but that is not all he did brethren while he prayed he sent his servant to to look for the sign of rain praise the lord hello hello did you hear what i just said let me say it again let me say it again let me say it again while elijah prayed he sent his servant to look for the answer to his prayer brethren that was what he was doing when you are praying are you expectant are you taking steps towards what you are praying about? Or as you are praying, you are still doubting. Some people are praying and doubting. You know, a pastor told his uh, congregation that they, they were going <laughs> to pray for rain uh, to fall. So he told them that when they, are, when they came to church, nobody brought an umbrella. So he told them to go back home, that they are not ready for the rain. 
How are you praying for rain and you came to church without an umbrella? How are you going to go back home? Because rain is going to come. When you are praying, expect, be expectant and take steps towards even the prayers that you are praying. Because how is it going to come to pass if you do not trust God, if you do not believe God? Elijah was asking his servant to go check for the sign of rain, even while he was praying. Praise the Lord. Because he believed that rain was going to come in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you. What is it that you're believing God for? And you are not taking steps towards it. You're believing God for a partner. You're believing God for abundance in your business. You're believing God for a promotion in your career. But you are not preparing for it. Maybe you are in a career where you need to take some courses if you're promoted to another level so that you can function. Are you taking those courses now in preparation of the belief that you're going to be promoted? If you are not doing so, then you are not praying with expectation. You're not praying, believing, and having enough faith that God was going to, is going to take you to that level. In your business, are you expanding your scope because you believe God is going to expand you? Or open up more doors for you? Or are you still where you are? Believing him to, to expand. If he expands you, what are you going to... You know, there was a time that pastor said <laughs> that God is not ready to send us 5,000 people to the church right now. Because if he sends us 5,000 people, where are we going to put them? But you see, when you are preparing for a 5,000 congregation, <laughs> maybe we start building another building because obviously <laughs> this place is too small. Hello? So if you are praying, be expectant, take steps, trusting God, knowing that God is going to answer that prayer in the name of Jesus. He goes on to say that when you are praying, we are looking for the beginning of an answer. In 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 43, he says, then he said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. So he went up and he said, there is nothing. Then he said, go back again. And he did that seven times. Hello, how many times have you prayed and believed and trusted and waited on him? You prayed the first year and you gave up? Brethren, we need to hold on to God and trust him for an answer in the name of Jesus. Keeping your faith in God during hard times is not always easy. It is really difficult when you are starting a ministry or a business or you are in school and things just seem to not be moving as God as you may have wanted it, trust God. Trust God. God is still there and he will make it come to pass in the name of Jesus. Then in verse 44, the Bible says, Then it came to pass on the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud. Praise the Lord. His servant then came back to Elijah and said, There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up. Say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Seeing past how the situation may appear. You know, when even there was a cloud at all, it was like a small, the hand of a, <laughs> as small as the hand of a man. But Elijah told the servant to go tell Ahab to prepare for the rain is it, here. What steps are you taking? What steps? When you see a sign of what God is about to do. Are you believing God that the ultimate is going to still come to pass? It's, he saw past the small beginning. Elijah saw past the small beginning to the downpour. He said that he saw the big God that he served. Praise the Lord. I will begin to wrap up now. The last, the last, but not the least comment that I have there is this. I don't know what situation that you are in right now. But can you trust God in the name of Jesus? Can you believe him? Can you look up to him that he will make a difference in your situation? God is speaking to each and every one of us today. Shall we rise up on our feet? Can we speak to him? Can we talk to him? If the Lord is speaking to you, you need to have faith in what he's saying to you. You need to be expectant. You need to look up to him in the name of Jesus. Even when it takes about seven times to go see, be patient and hope that the Lord himself will show up for you. I want you to speak to the Lord this morning. Talk to him. Speak to him. 
asking the Lord, help me, O oh God, that when, O oh God, you have spoken to me concerning the beginning of a thing I do, whether it's your business, whether it's your career, whether it's your school, or whatever it is, or the beginning of the year, that Lord, I will trust you. I will look up to you. I will hold on to you. Father, Lord, help me, O oh God, Jehovah, to have faith in you. A faith that will not shake any, that will not be moved in the name of Jesus. That will trust you till the end in the name of Jesus. I will look up to you. Speak to him. Maybe you are here. You've not even started. You've not given your life to Jesus. This is an opportunity once again. If you're here, you have not given your life to Christ. This is an opportunity for you to make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And if you're here and you want to give your life to Christ, repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord, please have mercy on me. Father, Lord God, have mercy on me. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from every form of unrighteousness. And accept me, O oh God, as your son in the name of Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior in the name of I submit to you and I ask that, Lord, that you will transform my life in the name of Jesus. Make a difference in my situation in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you once again for your word this morning. We pray that, Lord God, Jehovah, that when you speak, we will hear. And when you have given us instructions, we will obey you in the name of Jesus. We will trust you even as we pray concerning every situation that you have led us into. And that, Lord, we will be expectant in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.